All four candidates are from outside our region. This is an opportunity to learn uh, about them, to hear their vision for both the country and for our area, and educate them about the issues facing our rural community. My name is John Belinden. I am a member of the Chamber and have been asked to serve as moderator. My job is to ensure that uh, all candidates are treated equally and fairly. Uh, before the start of this event, uh, we had a bit of a draw to determine speaking order. And speaking first will be Sean, followed by David, followed by Fred, and finally Ross. And then we'll move one place forward with each question. Uh, the audience is asked to respect the nonpartisan nature of the event, so no cheering, shouting, or heckling. Uh, each candidate will be allotted equal time to respond. After introductions, the candidates will be given two minutes to make an opening statement. Uh, the moderator, that's me, will ask a series of questions based on themes that were identified by the Muscadabit Harbor Area Chamber of Commerce and Community Group prior to the event. Each candidate will be allowed three minutes to answer the question. We have the timekeeper, Nancy. Karen. Karen, sorry. <laughs> I have too many names to keep track of, sorry. Uh, Karen will keep the forum on schedule and indicate to the candidates uh, when their time is approaching the end. She has three cards with her, a green one. The green one indicates, uh, go ahead and start talking, go. Yellow, you have 30 seconds remaining, so it's probably time to start wrapping up your comments. And of course, the red card means stop. This forum provides an opportunity for candidates to communicate their platform or position on specific issues facing both our community and Canada. The Chamber sought input and ideas for questions from its membership and developed questions around six themes. And I'll go over those six themes in a bit. The candidates were provided with those themes, but not the actual questions. While we will not have questions from the audience, time will be provided at the end for you to meet with the candidates and ask the questions that uh, are of interest to you. A reminder, to all that the rules around voting have changed for this election. Uh, you are now required to provide two pieces of ID when you come and vote on the 19th. So keep that in mind. Uh, we have some information from Election Canada, which we have uh, available at the back there on one of the tables. So please pick one up uh, so that you're ready and you don't become frustrated when you do show up to vote on the 19th. So let me introduce the candidates. Um, they provided a brief bio of themselves, so I'm going to read what they sent. Uh, first speaker is Sean Fraser. Sean Fraser is running for the Liberal Party. Uh, he's a lawyer who grew up in Pictou County. Um, he was originally from Marigomish. Has spent the last few years working in the litigation and international dispute resolution practice groups uh, in the Calgary Office of Canada's top ranking law firm. But who hasn't? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> couldn't resist. Uh, he also serves as an associate research fellow with the Center for International uh, Sustainable Development Law. Right? Sean spent time working to promote access to information laws uh, with the uh, Human Rights Organization in Johannesburg. In this role, he helped facilitate various public education and advocacy campaigns. Um, Sean holds a master's degree in public international law and a law degree from Dalhousie University with a specialization in business law and a bachelor of science degree from St. Felix, where he graduated from with distinction. <laughs> Um, in his spare time, uh, Sean is a former member of the Skeleton Balmoral Pipe Band and has been playing the bagpipes for 22 years and uh, he has graciously um, tried to accommodate us by not playing the bagpipes. <laughs> right? 
He also plays the guitar and enjoys playing with friends at open mic events. I like the bagpipes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can have a Kaylee outside out. <laughs> We're going to keep this informal. <laughs> Uh, David Hatchie is a uh, candidate for Central Nova from the Green Party. Uh, David uh, is going to be speaking second. David was born and raised in Bathurst, New Brunswick. He studied environmental economics at Harvard, uh, followed by a 10-year stint on Wall Street trading equities. Uh, he has tra traveled extensively, including living for two years in India, managing a trading firm. Always intending to return to Canada, he had moved to Halifax in 2008. Uh, from there, he made his way to uh, uh, Pickford County, where he bought an old farm in Meadowville, and called it Harrier Hill. The farm is home to a flock of dairy sheep, island cattle, heritage chickens, and his two dogs, Abby and Sliver. Since moving to Meadowville, uh, he has become very passionate about rural development, attending highly respected Georgetown Conference as a delegate. Uh, he is president of the Scottsburg Community Coalition, was treasurer of the founding board of Crater Picton County Art Society, and serves on the board of the local conservation group, Friends of Red Tail, and is a member of the uh, Slow Food North Cumberland Shore, and was its delegate to Terra Magna. 2014 in Italy. In his spare time, David is an avid photographer um, and he is uh, currently president of SNAPS um, since, and he has been since its inception in 2012. Fred DeLore is your candidate from the Conservative Party. Fred grew up in Anaganish and graduated from St. Francis Xavier University in 2002. He worked on the family Christmas tree farm and woodlot in Anaganish County, where he gained first-hand experience on what hard work is all about. As he typically, uh, as he typically be in the woods, ready to work before the sun even came up. He worked with South Shore MP Gerald Petty and helped draft legislation that gave capital gains, the pearl of the fishermen, an important piece of legislation that benefited many fishing families in Nova Scotia. Fred also has a strong interest in international politics and has been to the Middle East on two occasions where he met with government officials, journalists, and military personnel, while also serving as an international observer for Egypt's 2011 election. And finally, we have Ross Landy, Landry, who's your candidate for the New Democratic Party. Uh, Ross is a former provincial MLA and cabinet minister and RCMP officer. <coughs> Ross was born and raised in Trenton, the son of a steel worker in a family of six siblings. During his 35 year career as a police officer, he demonstrated a deep commitment to families in each community he served. Upon retirement, he continued his commitment by serving as MLA for Picture Center. When the NDP formed the government in Nova Scotia, Ross served as Attorney General and Minister of Justice. His accomplishments include introducing and passing Canada's first legislation to protect victims of, uh, excuse me, cyber bullying. <coughs> as a senior RCMP officer, Ross established a problem-based learning and conflict resolution specialized in problem uh, based learning and conflict resolution. He also developed and delivered training courses across Canada and the U.S. Always active in his community, um, Ross has been a member of several boards and committees, including the Pictou County United Way, the Bike Ways Project, and Pictou County's uh, <coughs> United Tra Transportation uh, Committee. Uh, Ross promotes healthy living. He's an avid cyclist and enjoys hiking, kayaking, and playing hockey. Those are your candidates. Uh, our first theme and, and first question for this afternoon is around infrastructure. 
infrastructure is more than just roads and bridges. It includes our buildings, both public and private, water, sewer treatment, systems, services, and telecommunication. Infrastructure is essential for our survival and continued growth. As a rural community attached to a large center, Halifax, we constantly struggle to maintain our services and fight to remain on the city's planning agenda. The potential of this Eastern Shores Gateway community is sometimes frustrated by Halifax's focus on the center of the community, which is Halifax. <clears throat> we are trying to get municipality and other levels of government to move on the secondary planning process for this area so that we can make business case for water and sewer infrastructure. The question, what role do you see for the local MP in helping us advocate for our future, break down the barriers, and secure the investment we need to promote development in this area? John? Oh, sorry. Sorry. I'm, I'm ahead of myself. Uh, we'll have opening statements first from the candidate, Sean. Sorry, thanks very much for the kind introduction, and uh, thanks to everyone for uh, coming today. I think uh, the turnout that we see today is fantastic. I am particularly impressed because I uh, grew up in a rural area in uh, Marigamish, and to see uh, this level of turnout uh, uh, here in Muscadabit Harbor is fantastic. It's hard when you're knocking on doors to connect with as many people as you'd like in such a rural riding, uh, so to have events like this is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for the candidates to get to introduce themselves and uh, hopefully after today you'll have the information you need uh, to make a good decision. Uh, so I mentioned I'm, uh, I'm, I'm from a rural area and I know very well the, the feeling of being ignored when it comes to federal politics. Uh, when I chat with folks uh, in this part of the riding, uh, that's one of the top concerns I have. It's not always about a specific policy, uh, but it's about the lack of attention uh, that this area receives. Uh, one of the things that I made uh, very clear to my team is I'm from Pictou County. I spent a lot of time growing up in Antigonish, uh, and I used to come down uh, through the Eastern Shore in Muscadabit, but it was more to stop by for a basketball tournament, and I needed to get to know this place. Uh, so one of the things that we insisted on doing was opening a headquarters here, uh, so people would get to know us, and if they have questions for us, they can just pop into the old toddies to find out. Uh, so I think having a presence here was very important to us to show that uh, you're not going to be ignored. Uh, if we're successful in this election, and we are listening to the concerns that you have. Uh, although there is a, uh, a bit of a difference between our areas, we do have common issues, and uh, some of these common issues relate to the fact that we're from uh, fishing and farming and forestry uh, communities. We have everything we need here to succeed, and if we just work together and implement the plan that you'll hear more about over the course of today from the Liberal Party, uh, we will succeed. So thanks very much, and I look forward to getting to know you a little better as the course of the day goes on. Yeah. Well, thanks John and thanks to Margo and the Chamber of Commerce for inviting us all out tonight. Uh, I'd like to echo some of Sean's comments. This is an amazing event and it's great to see people disengaged in the democratic process. I think people have been disengaged for too long and there's been strong incentives created for people to not participate in the democratic process. Um, you know, I, I think events like this go a long way towards helping to increase voter turnout. You've also got an Elections Canada office in your community, which is great, so make sure you verify that you're registered to vote. Things have changed, so you know, voting is key. Voting will always be key. I think uh, the system, you know, not only dis through discouraging voting, but also uh, the first-past-the-post system is a bit of a problem right now in Canada and is driving down our voter turnout. So, you know, the Green Party, the Liberals, the NDP, I don't want to speak for them, but I know we're all against this first-past-the-post system and are looking for proportional representation. So bear with us this election. 
you know, in the future, I think you're going to get more representation. The voice of the Canadian people is going to be heard louder and louder as we go on. I know that it's frustrating at this time, but we're going to get there. Stick with us, and I'll look forward to presenting more about the Green Party as the afternoon goes on. Thank you. All right. Thank you all for, for being here. I echo what my fellow candidates uh, have said already. Uh, it's great to have such a presence here in a community like this, to have such a good crowd out for this, to, to hear us debate the issues and discuss the, uh, the, the topics that are important. Uh, I'm from here in Central Nova. I grew up here. Um, this place means a lot to me, this riding does. I've got family in the Muscadon area. Um, from Anaganish, uh, in the living in the Picto area right now. Um, I also, as was mentioned earlier, I do have experience in Ottawa. I know how Ottawa works, I know how to get things done. And that's something that this community needs. We need something to be able to get things done. And I pledge to you that I'll be able to be that person. Um, I work very closely with the provincial and municipal officials to achieve that. Um, we have issues here with uh, water and sewer that we need to get moving on. Um, and we'll be discussing that later in more detail, um, but I can pledge to you that I will work very hard for you and on your behalf. Um, this election is about protecting the economy. That's something that's very important that we're focusing on. Um, we have the best plan for that, the Conservative Party does. If you look at our track record, we looked at the, the global recession from 2008 and how our party came out of that better than, or our country came out of that better than any other G7 country. Uh, that says it right there. Uh, and we have a low tax, balanced approach to continue uh, to continue to grow the economy. There's a lot of work to do, but we have the right plan to do it. And I look forward to chatting with you uh, throughout the day on this, during this forum and then afterwards. So thank you very much. Hello everyone, and it's great to be here. For my fourth visit to uh, Muscadabra Harbor. This afternoon, you're gonna hear the words change. You're gonna hear it a lot, probably. The NDP is about change. The Liberals say they're about real change. The Conservatives will say to you that they're, that they're not about change, that they like the status quo, where everything is just Jim Dandy. Well, you'll have to make that decision on October 19th for sure. But I'd ask you to reflect on the word accountability. You probably won't hear that so much. My Conservative friend here is going to ask you to stay the course. He'll tell you that everything's pretty good in Canada under the, under the Harper government. My liberal friend is going to ask you to pretend that the government under Justin Trudeau uh, is, is going to be great. We just think back to when the liberals were in power. Well, you'll have to make that decision, as I say, on October 19th. But let's face it, are we doing really as well as we are, should be? We've got debt, hauling out of the middle class, the growing gap between the rich and the poor, the decline in our health care and social programs, the shameful treatment of our environment, the shredding of Canada's reputation internationally, the conditions of our roads and bridges, all of the courtesy of our two old nine parties. The Conservatives and Liberals may promise change, or real change, or whatever, but the response is really about staying the course. It's time that the two parties be held accountable. Tom Mulcair, the NDP, has a practical, principled, and progressive policies to deliver change to Canadians if you give us the chance. Today, I'll be at demonstrating our policies and asking you to consider me as your candidate in Ottawa. And I'll speak uh, for this area. I won't be Ottawa's voice in the area. Now to our questions. Uh, the first one being infrastructure. I've already introduced that, so I'll repeat the question. And we'll start with uh, Fred as we move down the, the line. Uh, what role do you see the local MP in helping us advocate for our future, break down the barriers, and secure the investment we need to promote development in this area? Thank you. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, some of the things that we need here moving in, the, in this area is water and sewer projects. And how do we do that? We need to work with uh, all levels of government. Our party um, brought in, uh, in the bu uh, last budget, the largest infrastructure announcement in Canadian history, a new building Canada plan. So we'll have funds available to do this sort of work. 
we are committed to doing this. It is the biggest infrastructure announcement in our country's history, and we did it by keeping taxes low and keeping the budget balanced. We will work with municipal and provincial officials to get this work done, um, and I think that's the key. It's, it's working with the, the other officials. At the end of the day, we need to work with the other parties, uh, the, other, uh, the other levels of government, uh, but we will deliver this. We will work very hard. I'll work closely with our city councillor here, David Hensby, uh, who's in the room, uh, to make sure that we accomplish this. Uh, there's also uh, a lot of other things here that we need to get done. Um, uh, High-speed fiber optic uh, internet is something that we pledged to do. Um, we've announced a $200 million announcement in the last, uh, uh, during this campaign. And we're gonna work in throughout rural communities to get this expanded so that people can, uh, can have this sort of uh, Process. And then we'll move to the end here. Ross? The point here is for, for a very long time, the Eastern Shore has been left out of the mainstream. But think about it the marginalization of this and other rural areas of this province parallels the marginalization of the Atlantic region. Nova Scotia has been on a continual recession for over 30 years. Successive liberal and conservative governments in Ottawa have thrown crumbs to this part of the country. A project here, a project there, but they never really address the underlying structural concerns of our rural communities. The infrastructure deficit, whether it's in roads, wharves, housing, hospitals, high-speed internet, and so on, is really a function of decades of liberal and conservative downloading and neglect. We keep voting them in, but nothing ever changes. The slow motion recession just keeps rolling on. Well, the liberals and conservatives have had their chance over and over again. As Tom McClare has been saying, it's time for change. The NDP platform includes many elements that will directly benefit infrastructure along the eastern shore. That is including increasing direct transfer payments to municipalities to build and repair roads, bridges, transportation, and an additional 1.5 million annually by the end of the uh, first NDP mandate. Working with, not against, provinces and territories to ensure effective infrastructure investment. By year four, the NDP will plan, will create 54,000 construction, manufacturing, and transit operation jobs across the country. We will do all of this without unfairly burdening our future. We will do it in a balanced budget by restructuring how we collect and distribute your taxes. This area, if you just take a look, and I remember driving down here the number of times that I came here, and how difficult it is to, to commute along number seven highway. Just think about what we need to do and what we could do and how more prosperous the overall area could be with, with a very viable transportation network system. And we need to make that investment. Thank you. estimated that Canada faces a $350 billion infrastructure deficit. There's no question that increased attention must be paid to our infrastructure. That's where residents' quality of life come from. That's where our businesses can develop with the infrastructure support that they need to grow. The Green Party has allocated $6.5 billion to infrastructure in the context of their cost and balance budget. We've got um, the municipalities, the federal government has been balancing their budget on the backs of the municipalities, and that's where most of your services are provided. 50% of all total tax revenue is collected at the federal level, 42% provincially, and only 8% is collected at the municipal level. And that's that's the services that, that people complain about as we go door to door. The Green Party is committed to establishing a Council of Canadian Governments, which is a regularly regular meetings between the federal, provincial, municipal, and First, Na First Nations communities to make sure that we're all in this together, everyone's on board, and that the flow of information is both ways, not just from the top down. Furthermore, the Green Party has committed to establishing six municipal super funds, each funded with $500 million a year, 
in the areas of brownfield remediation, waste and water, sports, culture and recreation, mass transit promotion, including car sharing services, cycling and pedestrian promotion, which there's a role for that in rural Atlantic Canada also, and community housing options. These investments will create jobs and bring the support and structure needed for Canadian businesses and small businesses to continue to hopefully thrive and continue to do well or start doing better in rural Atlantic Canada. High-speed internet is another severe barrier for rural Canadian businesses. I'm, I run a small business. I have a small firm in Scottsburn. My wife is a professional photographer. We struggle with their internet connection have dip, and have difficulty running what should be a business that can be run from rural Atlantic Canada. We, have, we struggle because of our internet connection. So the Green Party recognizes this as a problem. 1.5 megabits per second, per second is not high-speed internet, and the Green Party has solutions for that too. Thank you. Hi, well thanks very much. Uh, the infrastructure piece of this uh, election is probably the clearest dividing point of any uh, between the Liberal Party's plan and the plan of balanced budgets and cuts that the NDP and Conservatives are putting forward this time around. Uh, what we've got is, an, excuse me, I'm adjusting mic, I'm a big guy. Uh, the plan we've got is to, what I like about it is it's simple and it's honest. Uh, we're not making uh, false promises that we're going to give you the world for nothing. Uh, we're saying we're going to invest in projects that our community need, uh, communities need, that are going to put people back to work, uh, but there's going to be a cost to it, and that cost is a short-term deficit. Uh, that's the, that's the, uh, the honesty. It's refreshing being a, an aspiring politician uh, to see this level of honesty come through uh, in a in, uh, discussion about how we're going to grow the economy and put people back to work. Now, the kinds of projects that our communities need are, are apparent right here along the Eastern Shore. Uh, there's absolutely water and sewer issues along the Eastern Shore, but I've been spending a lot of time in seniors' residences as well. Uh, you don't have to look further down the road than the Birches to realize that we need things uh, in our communities that are actually going to help improve the quality of lives of the people that live here. Uh, when you start investing in projects that our communities need, uh, human beings are usually paid pretty well uh, to build and repair those projects. Uh, when human beings are being paid well, they spend their money on other things in our communities. Uh, local businesses, uh, we're going to not just need carpenters and welders to work on these construction projects, uh, but we're going to need accountants to service them professionally. We're going to need shops and restaurants because people are going to be working on the job and need a place to eat. Uh, my role as a federal member of parliament is to be a strong advocate for this area to make sure when we're, we can take advantage of the historic investment that the Liberal Party is making, which is the largest investment in our communities that the Canadian government has ever made. And with strong local representation rather than just a messenger from Ottawa, uh, we can improve the quality of the life of the people that live here. Thanks very much.